everyone, it's Jeremy Siner. So, I was teaching a one-on-one -on -one class the other day, and this question came up. Can I use an image to colorize my material procedurally? Can I take the colors from my image and automatically apply them to my material? Yes, you can. Today, we're going to generate a color palette procedurally, dynamically, and art directably with any image that you choose. Let's dive in. Okay, so in Substance Designer, and I'm looking at a graph that might seem a little bit familiar. In one of my previous videos, we created this handmade recyclable canvas paper texture. And we did this by creating a bunch of patterns and making this paper background with some creases and did a really cool color gradient thing. And we published one of the parameters that allowed us to select a couple different patterns here. And overall, it's a fun time. So I recommend checking out that video. I'll put it up in the top here or also down in the description below. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove everything that's connected to the base color. So I'm just going to select each component here. I've got the patterns, delete that, color gradients, delete that, paper color, and this node here. And so now we're just left with our base recyclable canvas texture as our background and nothing in the base color. So what is it that I want to accomplish? Well, I'd like to drag an image into my graph, grab the colors, and have my material automatically take the prominent colors in that image and apply them to my texture. So first off, I want to create or bring in whatever it is that we're going to be colorizing or changing the grayscale values to map to these new colors. So what I'm going to use in this example is a cells for noise. So spacebar cells for, there it is. And here's what we get with the cells for noise. It's important to know that you'll get the best results when you use a pattern that has flat grayscale values. So notice how the cells for noise has exactly that. It has clear flat shapes, no gradients, just flat separate grayscale colors. To build our color swatch generator, I'm just going to hit spacebar and bring in a gradient linear one. A simple gradient here. And what I'm going to do is double click it and change the rotation parameter to 90 degrees. So now it's moving left to right in a smooth black to white fashion here in a nice ramp. Next up, I'm going to bring in a quantize grayscale node. And so let's hook up the gradient linear into the quantize grayscale and notice what it's doing here. If I go over to the quantize parameter and change this to 7, we've taken our smooth gradient and we've limited it to 7 shades of gray. Now, next up, we need to add a gradient dynamic node. Now, this is the node that does all the magic for us. The gradient dynamic node takes in a grayscale input and remaps its values with the color information found in the gradient input. This means all we need to do is supply the color gradient information for the node to use, and it will remap it to our shades of gray. So I'm going to connect the quantized grayscale into the grayscale input. And now what I need to do is supply the image or bitmap that we're going to use to create our color palette. So I've done a quick Google search here for Terrazzo because I know that all these colors are going to be really awesome to pick palettes from. You get a lot of neat, well-matching, good colors to go together. I found an example here which I like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this image. And maybe what I'll do is save another one. So let's do this one as well. And so now let's drag in one of our images just by dropping it into our graph. I'm going to choose link resources because I don't want to import it into my file here. Link that. And then after this bitmap, I'm just going to add an HSL node. And this lets me control the hue, saturation, and lightness of this bitmap to give me some further control down the line. So what I'm going to do is drag this HSL output into the gradient input, double click on the gradient dynamic, and look at that, we're starting to map our values. And so I can take this gradient input position from the gradient dynamic, and I can cycle through the colors of our input image. And actually that's, let's see, and that actually looks like a pretty good spot. Boom, we now have a color palette. What's more is I can go into this quantized grayscale node and I can choose how many colors we want to sample. So I could take this down. I could say I only want three main colors here, or I can take this up and say maybe I want 15. And then I can go back into my gradient dynamic and change the position and say maybe I want all of these colors. So with just a couple of nodes, we've taken our image and mapped it to our palette. Now all we have to do is apply that color to our texture. 
So all we need to do is create another gradient dynamic. Let's find our cells noise. I'm going to connect it to the grayscale input and then take this gradient dynamic and put it into the gradient input of our second gradient dynamic. And now we've colorized our pattern. And let me connect this now, this last gradient dynamic, to the base color of our material. And there we go. And so now I have a lot of control here. So I can go to this quantized grayscale and maybe I want to go back to seven shades here. And now we're getting a completely different result from this bitmap image that we've imported. And I can also go into the HSL and I can change the lightness so I can brighten everything up or I can increase or decrease the saturation. And I can even shift the overall hue. And what's more is we got a couple images here. So I can go back to the images we saved and I can bring in another example. I'll choose link resource again and just connect this one up to the HSL. And we're getting a completely different result here. And then I can go through to my gradient dynamic and change the input position. So you see with just a couple of nodes, we've sampled our image here. We've applied it to our quantized grayscale using the gradient dynamic node and then applied it to our texture here. And if you'd like, you can bring in an input. So I'm gonna hit spacebar and I'm gonna type in input and choose input color. And now you can connect this input color to the HSL. And if I double click on the graph here, you can see we've got our input parameters. And so if you export this material by right clicking and choosing publish.sbsar file, and you import it into a program like Unreal Engine, Cinema 4D, Max or Maya, and it has the substance plugin, you can then import this substance and choose an image from this input that will automatically sample it and colorize your material. So we started with the pattern that we're gonna colorize, and we know it has some flat grayscale values with no gradients. Then we took a gradient linear one, and we quantized it with the quantized grayscale. We then put that into the gradient dynamic node, the magic gradient dynamic here. And we brought in our bitmaps, and we just used an HSL to be able to control it later down the line, and we connected everything up to get our palette. Then using another gradient dynamic node, we plugged in our original gradient dynamic into the gradient input and then took the pattern that we're going to colorize and put that into the grayscale input. And voila, you've got your colorized pattern. And that's it. Now you can sample your image, create a quick color palette, and apply it to your texture with just a couple of nodes. Now, if you like this video, don't hesitate to give it a thumbs up. It lets me know that you're watching and that you like to see more videos like these. And if you'd like to see more, hit subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I post new videos. I'm Jeremy Siner, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.